Hi everyone, ExtractCraft here, and welcome back to another educational video on how to properly execute an alcohol extraction using So what we're doing today is we've already done in previous videos the wash and the strain and also the filtration of our alcohol tincture. We used our Buchner funnels for that, and so now we have our clean tincture ready to evaporate down inside the source turbo. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get everything ready here. So I've already preloaded our tincture into our crucible up to the fill line. So we'll go ahead and put that in. And that just simply screws into the heating post. So we screw that down nice and easily until it basically stops. Now, you wanna make sure you have this firmly down on the heating post. So you may have to give it just a little bit, you know, to make sure that it is down. We wanna make sure that we get plenty of heat transfer through the entire uh, crucible. So that way we get all the alcohol to evaporate at the right speed. So now we're ready to place our lid on and go through the controls with you. So the first thing that you're going to notice is we've plugged our unit in and our green light is on. So before we start our unit, we need to actually set the altitude. So the source turbo has the ability to set altitude based on sea level. And that really takes into consideration the barometric pressure that we deal with when we're dealing with vacuum and heat. So we've set our altitude, but we're gonna go ahead and reset it just so you can see for yourself. So the first thing you need to do is hold the button down for a full 10 seconds. So I always tell people to count like one 1,000, two 1,000. It needs to be a full 10 seconds. After that, we're gonna go ahead and release the button and then the light will flash at us 10 times really fast. Once it's done flashing, we're gonna push the button one, two, three, four, five. And that's because we're at 5,000 feet. If you're at 2,000 feet, you would put the button, push the button twice. If you were at 6,000 feet, same thing, push the button six times. And once, once this is done, after you've pushed it five times, it will actually flash back at you five times to confirm. And then once you've, once you've gotten that, uh, you're good to go. You're ready to start the process. So now what we're going to do is go through the controls of normal mode versus turbo mode. Normal mode is designed to slow everything down. And really what that helps with is people that are using an alcohol-based tincture that is going to be very heavy in oil, waxes, lipids, things like that. So for instance, if we would have soaked our material for let's say maybe an hour a day a week whatever it may be um, that that you've done that's when maybe you want to use normal mode to slow it down so that way we don't get any splattering because a lot of times what happens is as the alcohol reduces down and the oil concentration gets heavier the oil will build up heat and, and bump as we call it or splatter onto the lid or a little bit on the glass so in order to prevent that we run it on turbo rather than or run it on normal rather than on turbo. So normal mode is if we just push the button once, that will start normal mode. Turbo mode is when we hold the button down for four seconds. Now, because we've only done a quick wash and we have did a five minute wash on this particular uh, tincture, we will actually use turbo mode for this process. So for turbo mode, we wanna make sure our valve, our release valve is closed and just make sure that's good and tight. Make sure our lid's on. As you can see, we do have the slanted lid, so it should slant downward and make sure that uh, it can go in any direction that you please, doesn't matter. So now we're gonna go ahead and drop it into turbo mode. Turbo is where we hold the button, like I said, for four seconds. So one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, four, 1,000. The light will flash twice and now the unit starts. And now what you're hearing are the pumps creating the vacuum. So they're sucking down the lid. And this will actually then take about a minute to get to a full vacuum. Um, you should easily be able to pick the machine up just like that after just a short time. Um, if you can't, then you need to either apply a little bit of pressure, make sure your vacuum screw is tight, or make sure that your uh, globe is actually centered onto the rubber mat uh, correctly. So this will take about a minute to go ahead and suck down, and then we'll be ready for the evaporation process. Okay, now we're back guys. So now our vacuum has been created. The lid is fully secured. And one thing you're going to notice with the source turbo is you'll hear the clicking noise going on from the unit. That's the heater's relay letting you know everything's operating correctly. So as long as you hear that, you're good to go. Now the pumps will kick on occasionally throughout the entire process. And this will help to always make sure that the vacuum is sucked down and that we do have a full vacuum throughout the whole process. 
One thing we keep in mind too is the pumps are also designed to control heat. So when the pumps kick on, the heater relaxes. And so what we want to do at this point is we have our ice tray. We filled it up with water and froze it as a solid block of ice. And we're going to set that on top. Now the reason for this is we are recondensing the alcohol on the lid. So we need to create a cold spot for the alcohol to recondense on. And this will allow the droplets to form, roll off the lid, and collect down in the chamber. Now, another little trick that you can do to help, the idea is to keep everything as cool as possible. Because once the alcohol heats up and begins evaporating and the tincture begins boiling, the alcohol needs to recondense as fast as it evaporates. So we're evaporating it, we need to recondense it. The ice tray on top acts as a cold trap for that. We can also set a small little desktop fan next to the machine and just blow it directly on the globe in order to keep everything cool. So you'll have your ice pan on top and a little fan to help cool everything down. As you notice, the pumps kick on periodically, but that should be about all it does. And it won't do it very often. Um, but if it does do it too often, then we do have something where we maybe need to either close the vacuum screw or check our lid, make sure everything's secured down properly, or check your altitude. Uh, the other thing that you can uh, kind of experience is if you're using a lower proof alcohol, for instance, like 151 proof, that will completely change the way the machine operates. It'll change the way the pumps operate. It'll change kind of everything. You really want to make sure you're using either 190 proof or higher, uh, food grade alcohol alcohol. So now we basically can sit here and let the machine go and just kind of check on it occasionally, make sure everything's good. You can already see condensation uh, slowly forming on the glass lid at the moment. So we're going to set this back on there. We're going to let the machine do its thing. And after two hours, the machine has an auto shut off. Now this is a safety feature. We don't want people to walk away from their ex extracts, forget about them, and then come back. Um, and have them overdone. So it has a two hour shutoff that will go through roughly two thirds to about three quarters of the crucible in the first two hours on turbo mode. On normal mode, normal mode is going to take a little longer. So the whole process with normal mode would take potentially six hours, four to six hours. Uh, with turbo mode, you should be able to go through a full crucible in three hours or less. So uh, at this point, we'll go ahead and come back in two hours and then we'll restart the machine to finish it off and for another hour. And then we'll go ahead and remove the oil from the crucible and show you how to do that. Okay, and now our lid is ready to come off. So we go ahead and set this off to the side, and now we remove the crucible. The crucible just unscrews. We can pull this out, and we'll set this off to the side. Now, one thing, you, the crucible will be warm at the end, so be careful with that. So first thing we wanna do is reclaim all of our alcohol, and we're just gonna pour this back into our measuring cup, just like that. And as you see, we started with 300 milliliters of alcohol tincture to evaporate down. And as you see, now we have roughly about 90 to 95% of our alcohol reclaimed that we can use now further, and it's nice and clean. So we set that off to the side now too. And now we are ready to go ahead and remove the oil from our crucible. One thing you'll need is just a small little spatula to go ahead and do that. And so here we go. So what you want to do is you just want to go ahead and pour it nice and easily around the mat. Um, you don't want to try to pull it too much, but we'll show you how to kind of spread it out at the end of this. But a, a little, if you need to, you know, use your spatula to pull it out, but it needs to stay in somewhat of a viscous form in order to pour out of the crucible. You don't want to take it too far down to more of a concrete or a wax. You want to get it out when it's still in oil form. So now that we have our oil out onto our mat, we can go ahead and begin to spread it around a little bit. Now this is real simple. Simply pick up the edges of the mat while it's still warm. You want to remove that oil while it's still warm in the crucible. So that way it, it will migrate around the mat and you can spread it out nice and thin and either to let it air dry or what you can do is you can throw it into a vacuum chamber. We have our oil, we have our oil nicely spread thin on our silicone mat, 
And as you can see, it should just be a nice thick oil at this point. It's gonna be tacky. You're not gonna to wanna to touch it right away. Uh, we need to let this air dry. There's a couple ways to do that. Uh, you can either throw this into a vacuum chamber, you can throw this into a vacuum oven, or you can simply let this air dry with maybe just a small fan sitting next to it, blowing over the oil to allow the residual alcohol to go ahead and release from the oil. The other thing you can do is now that you have it on the silicone mat, you can go ahead and decarb this oil just like this. I usually take a little small eight by eight baking dish and line that, and then go ahead and throw it in the oven at 240 for 40 minutes, roughly until the bubbles stop bubbling, and then you will have a full decarb. But as you can see, we have a beautiful oil here that uh, nice and thick, nice smells, Oh, smells delicious. By using a low temperature evaporation with the source only operating at roughly 105 degrees Fahrenheit, that makes for a much, much more potent oil and, and holds on to everything from the terpenes to any medicinal value that your oil may have. So uh, one thing also at the end that I like to do is once I've got my oil out, I've gotten it spread thin, it's ready to go. Uh, I like to clean the crucible out a very easy way. I keep a separate jar that I've used to clean other crucibles at the end because you're gonna have a lot of oil residual on the crucible. So the first thing you wanna do is go ahead and I like to keep this with about roughly 300 milliliters. And then this way I can just pour this in each time and use my spatula to just clean all the oil off around the edges of the crucible. This helps to just get it cleaner faster, get all that oil off, and then also you're reclaiming all that. Because what we can do is after I've done a number of batches and I've used the same alcohol to clean the crucible out, what I can then do is run this alcohol and reclaim all that oil that may have been stuck to the crucible or otherwise wasted. So no waste, no mess. Guys, thanks for watching our videos. Thanks for subscribing. Please subscribe to our channel. Please like this video, share the video, send it out to everybody you know. Uh, leave your comments down below. If you have any questions, we can help answer that. Or if there's other videos that you would like to see us do, please let us know. Have a great day, guys.